are you absinthe curious? There's a lot of mystery surrounding that mythical elixir called absinthe, and today we're speaking with an expert who can clear up some of that mystery for you. Hi, I'm Natalie, also known as The Liquid News. As a cocktail book author, blogger, and mixologist, I'm always looking for new inspiration. Welcome to Inspired Sips with The Liquid News. We're speaking with Gwydion Stone, the founder of the Wormwood Society and producer of Marteau Absinthe. Gwydion, let's start right with the basics. What is absinthe? Well, absinthe is a, uh, it's an herbal spirit that's distilled from aniseed and fennel seed and, of course, wormwood, which is where it gets its name. And tell us about wormwood. Wormwood is a shrubby plant that grows pretty much all over the world. There are about 127 different varieties, and it's in the sagebrush family, so it's a small shrubby kind of thing. Uh, but there's only the one species, Artemisia absinthium, is the species that gives its name to absinthe. And what is the biggest misconception about absinthe, in your opinion? That it is poisonous, bad for you, that it's a drug and it'll make you hallucinate. Yeah, I hear that a lot. And, and so why do people have this idea? Well, part of it, the first part of it goes back to when they thought it was poisonous. Uh, prior to the 1960s, it was thought to be a, a poison. And that had to do largely with uh, a, a, a misconception and a health scare that was circulated in the, uh, us over a century ago. About because absinthe had begun to take over uh, wine's uh, place as the, as the national favorite beverage. In France? In France, yes. So, so the illegalization of absinthe actually started in France and then came to the U.S.? Is that what you're saying? Technically, no. It, it actually started in, uh, in Switzerland. And from there, it, was, uh, it, it started circulating through, through Europe. It was banned in the United States in 1912, and eventually France finally banned it in 1915, just before the war. So absinthe has become legal again in the United States about two years ago, more or less, maybe three. Why? Why is it legal again? That's a long and, and, <laughs> and twisted story because it involves the law. Technically, absinthe has been legal since the 1930s. It's, uh, and a lot of people don't know that. No laws have actually changed. It's been, it was just a, um, an internal policy change with the TTB that regulates alcohol in our country that they, uh, they decided that they would allow beverages called absinthe to be sold in the United States. But we don't have, currently have a legal definition for absinthe in, in the United States. You are obviously very entrenched in this absinthe culture. What ignited your passion? Well, uh, back in the 70s, I was very much into uh, making herbal medicines and tinctures and extractions, and I also made uh, fragrances and things. So that gave me a real interest in, uh, in, 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 the, in the botany side of it. And, uh, of course, in my, in my reading, I come across Wormwood, the, the reputation of absinthe, and, that, of course, that, that incredibly dramatic reputation really catches your imagination. So that's where, that's where I first really became aware of absinthe. And then uh, that, that interest kind of lurked there in the shadows until the 90s when it started becoming a little bit more popular in the media and things. And then by the late 90s, it was, uh, it, it was, there was a real resurgence in Europe uh, in uh, 98, 99. And then by that time, there was the Internet. And so I started really getting serious about researching it. And then one thing led to another. Well, and so much of the cocktail culture resurgence has come from the internet, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. But we're here with you in person, so I want to see in person, how do you uh, present absinthe? How do you serve it? There's a whole ritual involved. We think of artists and writers, and let's see how that's done. Okay. Well, first of all, the, uh, the absinthe fountain... Uh, or dripper, whatever, it's, is, is mostly, it's just a water dispenser, really, just like the uh, water fountain that you would find in any cafe. And the reason that this is here is so that you can slowly add the water to the absinthe uh, because you don't want to just dump the water in. It's kind of like you think of an emulsion. The absinthe clouds up, as you'll see, when we add the water in the same way that vinegar and, and oil don't really mix very well, so you add them together slowly, and it makes a creamy, uh, creamy, creamy liquid. Absinthe is, is largely the same way. You want to add the water very slowly to get a good mix. And it, uh, as we do that, you'll see that the, the aroma just blooms and just fills the room when we do that. So uh, let me go ahead and get this one started. Now what we've done here, I've, I've poured out a portion. You'll want to pour uh, about an ounce because this is strong stuff. This Marteau is 68% alcohol, 136 proof. Woo! That's very strong, so, yeah. And absinthe was never intended to be drunk neat. Right. It's just way too hot. Mm -hmm. It'll just numb your tongue. You won't taste anything. Mm -hmm. So you should always dilute it with at least three parts water. I recommend five parts water, so mm -hmm. five to one. 
uh, and sweetening is entirely a matter of, of personal taste, just like coffee or tea. You, if, you, if you want sugar, add it by all means. I tend to add a lot. Uh, if you don't, then, then you just don't. But you still want to add the water slowly. So, so le let's show how this absinthe okay. fountain works. Go ahead and turn, turn the uh, okay. thing on there and we'll let it drip. And there you go. Just a slow stream like that is fine. Now, a lot of people will, will tend to, you, especially if you read on the internet, people talk about the slow drip, these ultra slow drips, and they brag about how long it takes. <laughs> you don't really need to do that. That's kind of an exaggeration. You do want to add it slowly, but a slow, steady stream like this is pretty much what you want to do. Just enough Who to be able to... Who has patience to exactly, let it drip? Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of that, okay, the, um, now the fountains and the spoons and all the paraphernalia, those came around in the latter part of the absinthe craze. Now, absinthe w was, was first co commercialized in France in 1805. It didn't really start to become po very popular until the mid-1800s, 1860s, and then just exploded toward the late 1800s and turn of the century era. So before that, the, uh, they didn't have the spoon. They didn't have the, have the, uh, the special fountain. They, they had a glass, and they would either add simple syrup or just a, a chunk of sugar. And you can even use a fork if you don't have an absinthe spoon. So how would someone do it at home if they don't have an absinthe fountain? Just like this. You can use, this is an absinthe glass. Of course, you can use any kind of a, any kind of a glass. In fact, the, uh, the earlier, um, in the earlier years, the, uh, the absinthe glasses were more like this. It was just an ordinary cafe water glass. Like a water glass, yeah. yeah. So. So a wine glass will do anything that you can really see through and that'll hold about six, six to seven ounces of water. I or, think it's important for people to know that you don't have to go out and spend $500 on fountains and antique glasses you and, and Epsom spoons. You can do it at home and, and it can you, be very accessible for a party or a special event or special dinner. Yeah. If you look at some of the, uh, the old photographs and the absinthe posters and the art from the time, mm -hmm. most of them didn't even feature absinthe glasses or fountains. They were just ordinary wine glasses or water glasses. Well, let's show so, how we do it at home. So at home, you would do just like with the fountain only, you would do it by hand. And an ordinary carafe, the only thing that you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you've got something that pours very, in a very thin stream. So you don't want to splash water all over the place, but just a slow, steady stream, just enough to make sure that the sugar is melted, or at least mostly melted, before the glass is full. And now that it's turning a color, and that's called louching. Can you it's explain louche. why it louches? Yes. The louche is, um, well, it's a French word that means cloudy, mm -hmm. uh, shady, uh, disreputable. Mm -hmm. A person can be louche, too. <laughs> a person can be louche. <laughs> so uh, what happens here is that there are a lot of oils, a lot of um, botanical oils in the seeds in, involved. And those mix very readily with the, uh, with the high-proof spirit but not with water. So when that ratio between water and alcohol starts to change, those oils come out of solution and become suspended. If you looked at this under a microscope, it would look like a little tiny lava lamp. <laughs> so there you have it. Well, I it's think we're ready to have a little sip of uh, absinthe. As they say in France, santé. Thank you, Guérin, for joining us and teaching us a little bit about absinthe Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Cheers.